Welcome back to Security Simplified. Today, let's talk about MFA or multi-factor authentication and how attackers bypass it. Want to get rewarded for finding security bugs like this one? Integrity is a bug bounty platform that pays you for reporting security vulnerabilities. With more than 100 public and private targets to test your skills on, you can test your hacking skills on real targets legally and get rewarded for it. Sign up now with the link in the description. Multi-factor authentication refers to the practice of requiring users to prove their identity in more than one way. For example, when you try to log into a site, you might have to enter your password and also receive a code on your phone or your email. This protects users when their passwords are stolen. However, if an application implements MFA incorrectly, attackers can exploit weaknesses in the authentication to bypass MFA. Let's take a look at the different ways that this can happen. The first mistake developers can make is not implementing FFA across all services within a single sign-on system. Single sign-on, or SSL, is a feature that allows you to access multiple services that belong to the same company without logging in multiple times. For example, if you are logged in into Facebook, you won't have to re-enter your credentials to use Messenger. If one site requires MFA while another site of the same SSO system does not require MFA, attackers could log into that site that does not require MFA to bypass the protection. For example, let's say that site A does not require MFA while site B does. If an attacker can compromise a user's password to site A, they can log into the user's account on site B by logging into site A first bypassing the MFA requirements on site B. And sometimes, attackers can defeat MFA by simply exploiting application logic errors in the authentication process. A common logic error that compromises MFA systems is allowing users to skip a step in the authentication process. For example, let's say that an application implements a three-step login process. First, the application checks the user's password. Then, the application sends an MFA code to the user and verifies it. Finally, the application asks a security question before logging the user in. Sometimes, application allows users to reach step 3 in the authentication process without clearing step 1 and step 2. And all the attacker has to do to manipulate the site's URL and request the page is request a page of a later stage directly. Let's say that the final stage of authentication is located at example.com slash security questions. In this case, the attacker might be able to jump to the security questions and bypass the MFA step by visiting that URL directly. Some applications do not require MFA from recognized devices or devices where the users have logged in before. In this case, attackers can try to figure out how the application recognizes a device and forge a signature from a recognized device. For example, if a site marks recognized devices by using a predictable cookie, attackers can simply add the cookie value to their requests. Attackers might also take advantage of poorly designed MFA code generation and validation systems. Since MFA codes are often four to six digit numbers, attackers might brute force the codes if no rate limiting is in place. Alternatively, if an application does not invalidate each code after use, attackers may reuse previous codes. And if codes are not randomly generated, attackers might also try to reverse the generation algorithm. Even if the MFA implementation is faultless, Attackers might also be able to bypass MFA by using a technique called SIM swapping. SIM swapping involves the attacker calling the phone company of the victim, lying to them, and get the victim's calls and texts forwarded to their device. For example, by saying that they are the owner of the number and that they have lost their phone. This way, they can receive the MFA code belonging to the victim. And finally, attackers can also bypass MFA by launching a man-in-the-middle attack or by spying on the victim's internet traffic. But these attacks tend to be highly targeted and are not that common for the regular user. 
So by implementing MFA on your application whenever possible, it's still a safe bet to protecting your users' accounts. But MFA only adds to the security of your application if they are implemented correctly. And that's it for today's security lesson. Thanks for watching.